Craveable Podcast, Episode 11, Trends in Food and Restaurants. One, two, three, four. Welcome to the Craveable Podcast, where real matters. We are your hosts, Ben and Katie, and this show is brought to you by Fossil Farms. Today, you might notice we have a very special guest in the room. In fact, our first guest ever on the Craveable Podcast. Her name is Bianca Concepcion, and she is the executive chef of Fossil Farms. Now, Bianca has a plethora of knowledge and experience in the restaurant industry, food service from all aspects, retail, catering, you name it, she's done it. And she's going to talk to us today in our conversation about food trends and trends in the restaurant industry. Welcome, Bianca. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's great to have a guest. Welcome also, to the show, Bianca. My first podcast that I've done ever. So yeah. First of many. First of many. You're an easy guest mark. to have on. You work in the building and yeah, we don't I have know. to pay you extra. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we also did our first podcast ever approximately 10 episodes ago. And Yeah. You know, it's it, it's only uphill from here, so yeah, you know, it's absolutely. what we tell ourselves to get through the day. Is, yeah, I think we're pretty good at this. I think we're getting better. Yeah. I think we're getting better. I listen to it all the time. So there you yeah, go. Yeah. Where um, do we begin? I mean, we were going to go over food trends and restaurant trends and get Bianca's reaction to it. I think it'll be semi serious on some some topics, and then definitely pretty casual on a lot of them, just to kind of get your reaction as someone who's let's find the right word we can't but um <laughs> we'll just go right into it and yeah. we're going to start off by not mentioning some things that are probably pretty popular on the internet we're not going to do pumpkin spice oh, it's man. fine it's played out that's not a trend that's been happening for like right for a long fall time was invented so like, that's, that's not a trend that's a good place to start the conversation right our food trends are sort of cyclical and there's things that are popular now in restaurants or especially on tiktok that I don't come across because I don't have TikTok. I'm not on it often. But there's Loser. also people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also Nerd. don't have TikTok. <laughs> oh, I'm, do I, I'm the only one on this TikTok. No, TikTok is TikTok is oh, huge. You're man. on TikTok. Yeah. TikTok is major. You're with it. You're yeah, hip and I'm with guess it. I'm hip with, with it. Hip with <laughs> it. I like that. I like that. Do you want to start on your list or should I start on mine? I'll start on my list. So Bianca, Ben and I were comparing lists and he just started bashing like everything I was saying. Correct. As, as, yeah, I mean, that's what happens off air, guys. It's not It's not uh, uncommon. Um, so, you know, I dug a little bit deeper into it and I made up some new topics so that my co-host wouldn't think I was going off script, which I don't think I was anyway, but, you know. No such thing. It's half your show. Um, half. <laughs> Shots fired. Um so I'm going to actually, I am going to bring up something that I saw that I was very happy to see. Now, this was in an article talking about what to expect kind of in 2024 and what we're potentially moving towards. And that was the, the title was female connoisseurs first. And basically what it was describing is that now more than ever and moving forward, there's a lot more women leading the industry, whether it's in restaurants, upscale or otherwise, making their way in, you know, um, cocktails, bartending or winemaking or, you know, blogs and things of that nature. There's a lot more women. And so it's predicting that, you know, in these facets of the industry, there are going to be a lot more female leaders and they are going to focus more on the social and ecological issues, which I think is interesting because it inherently says that men just, you know, they are not with it. And I mean, that is true. Am I right? Sheesh. <laughs> no, but it's true. And I, I thought that was a really cool, you know, idea and point. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely good to, to see that, that bit of transition, especially over the years for myself. I mean, I've been kind of doing this for about a decade or so, a little over a decade. So, I mean, a lot of leaders in the kitchen have been male. I haven't seen too many females. So it's kind of like, you know, it's good to, to be a part of that, for sure, and hopefully one day just be that role model for other women to, you know, be able to take on this this role as a chef or a head baker, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, very well said. I remember there was a point in time when I was the only woman in the kitchen outside yeah, of pastry. I, I know that. It I know that gets feeling. rough. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's crazy because, like, I mean, for me, I, I did baking for, like, a short period of time. And it was primarily women mm. that did baking. 
and I didn't see too many guys doing it. Which I hate that. That's like totally gender roles. Just just to throw it out there. There was literally one guy on the pastry team when I, where I was working and it's like, really guys? Like we're, I think also it's it, still doing that. <laughs> being Sorry, no. a female in that position, it's you know it definitely poses its challenges for sure. Like I've experienced my fair share of challenges. Big one is like respect in the kitchen. You know, sometimes you really don't get that from other blind cooks or other people in general in the kitchen. I mean, it's tough. It's, it's like almost as if you have to prove yourself and prove your worth, which I know my worth, but I don't feel like that's a need if you're good at what you're good at continue rocking with it 100 percent. i definitely got a 100 percent serious go cry in the walk-in before <laughs> didn't love it didn't that's love so it. Yeah. easy to me yeah i think that uh, kind of bookends the trend that's coming up i mean you and i katie personally work with a lot of women who own their own businesses mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. and i work with a number of female chefs and they definitely have a not to say that there's like a chip on their shoulder but they no, know I get that. that they have to put on an air of being a little bit tougher because they yeah. get this pushback yeah, from men all that. the time and i grew up with my mom and my two sisters and for me it's so crazy that people don't treat them just like everybody else, especially when it's in a professional environment. But because of that, we get to see this awesome trend where we have people who are running their own businesses, be it something like opening their own bakery, or we work with the Butcher Girls. I think they're based out of New York. Mm-hmm. And they're then, awesome. Yeah, they're great. There's a great um, company that I'm forgetting the name of out in, I think it's Ohio, where it's a female-led whole animal butcher shop. Super awesome to see them doing that and doing their own charcuterie. Yeah. And then on the other side of the coin, it's like, oh, is it special because they're doing it and their women it's like no they're doing the best level of this cooking or of running their own business and they just happen to be women and people latch onto that idea eventually we'll hopefully get over this kind of like inherent you hopefully, know gender roles and misogyny hopefully. but in the near future i mean i don't really see that changing too much i'm hopeful but um just based off of like my own experience definitely you have to have a tougher skin it's, you know, you build it over time. Yeah. It comes with you. Calluses. I will yeah, say that exactly. when I was in the kitchen, my mom, we were having a conversation once, and I'm not supposed to curse on the podcast, so I won't curse on the podcast. She was like, Katie, you know, you're like, you've kind of been like a B word lately. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that is factual. I am a meaner person now for sure. I can't believe she said that to you last week. Oh, shit. <laughs> But yeah, sh- it's almost like you have to cut it off, it's like separate mm-hmm. your your personalities from Tough. like work, and then to your like s- social family life too. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Ben, do you want to? I mean, you want to like do a little ping pong action here? You want to? Yeah, wanna I'll, I'll, I'll go casual and you go serious. This is <laughs> one that I, I know Bianca and I have talked about this in the kitchen because, and I wouldn't say it's like a fervent hatred for, but I am very sick of seeing burrata on everything. <laughs> right now i want to get your take on that i want to get your take both on your opinion of it overall and why people are doing it is it because it's prevalent is it like a great menu item i mean it does make a solid menu item just to have people are very familiar with it too um i feel like you could pair a lot of things with it as well very, very so tough. i kind of say yay and nay to it um you know it's it's just like for me if if it's a good burrata and it's seasoned right and it's paired with the right items sure that's that's great um but that's not something i guess i mean i've i've had my fair share of doing that in restaurants too so you know i'm kind of guilty doing it but i'm personally okay with it i i think it's all right of a trend to do a plate out i <laughs> love a good burrata yeah i actually had brunch with a friend uh last week and the week before and she was saying how she had gone to the place before and she was like I have to say, I got the burrata, and they had, like, they cut it open before they gave it to me, and it was, like, ruined. It's, like, the satisfaction (laughs) of doing yourself. Yeah, like, what are you going to do? What are you doing messing with my burrata like that? Yeah. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Yeah, I love a good burrata. Let me pop the balloon. (laughs) But then again, very, very upsetting when the burrata is upsetting, you know? Yeah. It's like, this is not the burrata of my dreams, and what what business do you have serving this? (laughs) Let's not get me started on it, right? It's just a soft... Cheese and it's the remnants of the mozzarella making process. But I a think good if, mozzarella is better. If you're pairing, like I said, pair it with the right items. You know, if it's if it's soft, you know, pair something crunchy with it. Mm. Throw that in there. You know, I mean, peaches, burrata, 
Yeah, a little bit of like yet. age balsamic or vincoto, like throw that on there, boom. You know it's like mean? beets and goat it's cheese. Kind of like you know, oh, like your match thing. made in heaven, baby. <laughs> Not a fan of beets personally. Love it. I love I love it. Beets. Really? The other thing that's kind of on everything is two other things, real quick. Mexican street corn elote Ooh. are things being like, oh, Mexican street corn style, and I'm just like. Yeah, that's, personally that's... over it, and then also the um, fancy toasts, the avocado toasts, always oh. on sourdough. I think we yeah. were riffing on this the other yeah, day, we too. Were, we were. And I'm like, there's a billion other breads out there. I yeah. get why they use it. That's st- structural integrity, but it's I not am my personal so favorite. over it. Yeah. Yeah, I would probably opt for something else, but I'm, I'm like I said, I've also been guilty of that. We're <laughs> doing that on a menu as well, just because it's, you know, a popular item. People yeah. love that. You know, I think people are also becoming more health conscious of, of what they're eating. And they're like, okay, avocado toast. And I mean, I can't go wrong with that because I know I'm getting healthy fats. And, you know, we garnish it with pretty much anything. Everything, bagel spice, pickled red onions, poached egg, like. And I really want to spend eighteen dollars on a piece of toast. <laughs> that's the other thing, yeah. Mushroom little, toast is really mushroom big. Mushroom toast, with a, actually, like, with that's soft really egg good. On top. It oh. is really good. It is. That's so good. I don't know that I want mushrooms. But you put that on my breakfast. Like a hard, hard oh. roasted mushroom. Really? Yeah, I don't know if I want it in in on it's or like around one my of those breakfast. Things like you know, oh, you, put so it, you can put it into an omelet. Yes, that's true. I mean, you I know? love a good, I love a good veggie forward breakfast, but mushrooms usually don't come to mind. Mm. Um, but in my humble opinion, I don't think fancy toast belongs in this episode because that's not a trend. That is some played out ish. You know what I mean? <laughs> that sounds like a played out trend, then, that's, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's been going on I forever. It. It's been going on forever. It's not played out trends. Um, all right, you still you still hitting us? No, you hit, hit this right. one. Let's see, what do I got here? Don't uh, even ask. Just go for it. Ghost kitchens. What about them? <laughs> uh, I didn't even know what they were pre-COVID, and then in yeah. COVID. You know, we're talking to restaurants and businesses, and everyone's like, oh, well, you know, the kitchen's here, da, da, da. And I'm like, well, I can't find anything on Google about you, or, you know, I can find you on Google, but there's no address, and so I'm a little... And they're like, yeah, well, you know, it's Ghost Kitchen, and we were here, and then we deliver, and it, and I think it's very interesting, because, um, I mean, I'm sure that existed pre-COVID, but with everything being delivered during COVID, it's like... And with restaurants, you know, m- many of them failing horribly or struggling to stay afloat, you know, these people who are once in full service restaurants are like, how do I make money? And then boom, ghost kitchen. You know, you, you have a space, you bring your staff there, you prepare your awesome food, and then you figure out a way to get it to its end user. And I don't know, I guess that's a, I guess that's still a thing now. Yeah. I think, you know, I, for, for making it accessible. For other people, especially different types of cultural food, too, allows that kind of freedom, you know. But, yeah, I didn't really get to, to know that until COVID times. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I mean, personally, I don't think I've seen it pop up too many places anymore, maybe on the West Coast. Yeah, quick little blip. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it was, it's, you know, I, have, I had a friend who who had a type of, I guess, worked in a ghost kitchen um, just to produce food but i mean now he's opening up a restaurant just Mm -hmm. based off of what he made during covid Mm -hmm. so and started with actually ghost kitchen then food truck now opening up a a restaurant Uh, so he's just kind of like built that so i think that also allows people to continue businesses and just build up your business as well yeah and i'm I'm sure the you know the the overhead and the rent and all that for a ghost kitchen is going to be way less than that absolutely you know what i mean space space alone um, so it can be, yeah, I, I didn't even think about it that way. It could be a great way for someone who's interested in opening their own business to kind of like get their foot in the door, right. get some staff, get some key menu items and get some feedback from customers as well. And they have exactly. to basically do that too, because they're regulated. You can't just cook food in your kitchen at home and sell it. Yeah. So they get that licensing that the exactly. restaurant has. And in a way it's like a share with the restaurant. Like, let me use your space. We'll pay you for it. Then we can get our feet off the ground. Maybe do some collaborations later. But I don't think a ghost kitchen term was a thing until no, COVID. I knew people I who were starting small businesses. I mean, people do pop ups and stuff, and, yeah. and and utilize kitchens there. But I mean, ghost kitchens, I didn't really come across until or hearing about it until COVID. Yeah. I don't know if anyone heard me gasp. I don't know if the listeners heard me gasp. <laughs> but Ben and you kind of as well touched on another one of my topics, which is collaborating brands. And host kitchens so you know like one group or restaurant will do an event in another group or restaurant space 
And it can be great for many reasons, but I would imagine, number one, if, you know, the cooking group doesn't necessarily have a space or the right space for that event, you have, like, marketing overlap, and the host kitchen or space, actually, I'm pretty sure standard, gets a portion of the profits, and they'll be, they'll be busier than they would on any whatever normal Tuesday, let's say. I think that's really cool. I've been to a couple of things like that, and... At first, I was confused. I'm like, wait, but this is the so-and-so dinner. Why is it at so-and-so? I don't understand. <laughs> um, but it's very cool, and it's fun. It's like a pop-up yeah. style thing, and I think I've seen – I mean, maybe I was just um, blind to it or naive of that concept, but I feel like I've seen that a lot more recently. For sure. That's definitely popping up. I wonder if that's kind of like the natural progression of the, the, the ghost kitchen – to the pop-ups. So someone's like, let's do a collaboration. I don't have the right. scalability to actually do this because we're a small venue and you have a full restaurant. And then doing that brand recognition definitely helps. Yeah, What's I mean, your we, take on pop-ups right I now? I mean, I, I love pop-ups. I love being able to go into other people's kitchens, too. And, you know, one that we did um, not oh, yeah, that long ago lot, um, was with Viaggio's. And we kind of collaborated on a menu we execute our courses, they execute their courses, you know, talk about our dishes, could talk about who we are, um, what the inspiration behind those dishes were. And, um, but I, yeah, I've done, I've done my fair share of pop-ups. So I kind of like experienced my first pop-up, which was when I was working in the village, um, right on 12th and Greenwich Ave, it was called the Wallflower. And, uh, we had someone who specialized in like Hungarian style food. Ooh. And so he, developed his own menu but he just needed us to just prepare the food it wasn't even like let's collaborate together he just needed to like, use the space to have his event essentially and then use the staff too to help out service and, and kitchen service yeah, yeah exactly so i mean that was my first experience with the pop-up i think they're great um you know it gets the exposure out there for other chefs um other restaurants too but yeah that i think that would be my I'm I'm for it. I'm, I'm definitely for the for, for the pop ups, especially <clears throat> collaborative. Yeah, get some creative menus out there and actually try something different, especially yeah, for restaurants that say they're seasonal. And then it's like, well, right. fall, winter, summer, and spring aren't mm-hmm. technically the seasons, but you know, my farmers market's changing over way more than that. And you change your menu every eight months, so like, are yeah, you that's seasonal? Tough. So mm-hmm. the pop ups are great to just try something different. Katie and I went to a pop up with the store manager Liz. Was that and the one that my that Tom came to? Yeah. I was, it was just like a pasta pop up. That, that was fun. Got crazy. They got they got slammed and they, they got, were not prepared they for got it. Oh, slammed. Was this um I don't know. I don't should, remember the place. Should we call it out? It was Blue Steel Pizza Co. Oh, okay. They did a pop up. It was good. Oh. The food was really good. The service was a bit lacking, but when you're trying to put out that many plates that you just developed like five days ago, I imagine it's a bit challenging. Your kitchen staff's like, What are we doing? <laughs> was it all just like one flat seating and then Everything came out at once. No, it was or they you, took. It was a menu that you ordered from, uh, but they recommend like they recommended a ton of dishes, which was like ended up being right because they were quite small. But you know, they I forget they were like, we recommend you know like ten to whatever you know. And we're like we're like well, not that, that feels like a lot. Um, and so then you know it was everything was small, like very small tasting size, and they kind of just ex- explained that they just bring it out as it's ready. Um, and everything went, I mean, first of all, everything was really good and everything went really smooth until, I, I don't know, I guess there was, d- there were different seating times, but there must have just been a point when like the, They're just getting the forces yeah. converged and everyone needed something. And, oh, you know what happened? Cause they posted about it after. I think like they lost power in the kitchen. Whoa. Something majorly, something majorly wrong happened. That completely screwed the kitchen yeah, up. Yeah, slowed it That's down. And then they were was. kept putting out plates, and they kept coming up to us. And That's we were like, no, we was. already had this one. Yeah, oh, it no. wasn't. And they were like, oh. It wasn't lack of preparedness. I remember because we were like, whoa, what happened? And the next day they posted, and they're like, remember when this happened, and this happened, and this happened? And, this? and it was like something like, you lose power, like generator won't go on, uh, you know, service staff fires like 42 risottos, like whatever. And so... It was hectic, but them them trying to catch up was putting out a ton of dishes, and we were like, we already had that corn thing like 
two times, but if you're not yeah, offering. <laughs> yeah, we can't, I'm not paying you for all of these. But I guess that's the challenge of a pop-up, right? It's like you don't want, know what you're running into and you don't have time expect, to figure out the kinks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're like, oh, we're here for two days, so yeah. ugh, wish yeah. us luck. But it was really good. Was- Shout out to Blue Steel Pizza Company and Seven Doors Down Ramen in Bloomfield, New Jersey. You guys rock. Yep, we love them. All right, Ben, I think it's your turn. It's my turn. I know we talked about this one as well. It's Maybe I should have came up with a new list, but how do you <laughs> feel about schmear boards? Schmear boards. Oh, I just yeah, learned that Say no more, right? Uh, nah. Or a butter board. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think schmear boards is inaccurate because schmear is technically cream cheese. In my yeah. Opinion. They do those too. Well, I didn't know this existed until three minutes ago when Ben told me. And Maybe I was like, can talk about I was like, that's not a thing. But when I Googled it, Butterboards was the top. It's like one of those things from especially a TikTok trend. You see it everywhere. It's just as Butterboards. Like, why? Yeah, so why don't why? you? That's now, like, I don't I don't I get no that. idea what that was. So, Bianca, why don't you describe to our audience what the heck a Butterboard is? Butter us up. Butter and buttering up. All right. So it's just pretty much taking tempered butter and then smearing it onto uh or spreading it onto a, a wooden board or any platter of whatever type and then garnishing it with different toppings whatever you like whether it's scallions or you know just flaky sea salt you know and then pair it up with like vegetables and bread and then call it a day a little crudite yeah, yeah. like instead of just doing a dip in a bowl it's, yeah you're essentially like swiping yeah. across this whole in board butter? I don't want butter on my carrots. I, I feel like don't there was, either, but man, people I do wish that. I could remember who it was. Or Toast Point, something like, like that. Like a Michelin star restaurant doing that with radishes, like dipping radishes into oh, butter okay. and gets cold. You I know, guess that's acceptable. Kind of like that, but yeah. yeah. I don't. I think it might be just overrated, to be honest. That's just my personal opinion. No, and that's what we're here for is your personal opinion. Yeah. It's like the natural progression of the cheese board and charcuterie board. They're yeah, like, well, exactly. we need something new to put on it. Something new and trending. And for some reason, people want to eat off of the cutting board like that. You know? I think, I think. Don't know what's satisfying about said, it. They said, people finally realize how much we're overcharging for avocado toast. Let's <laughs> do it, but with butter. <laughs> On wood. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Oh, man. I think that's a ludicrous concept. I didn't know it existed. I don't support it. Yeah, None of us support it. I don't it. think I, I would ever I support I'm not here for support it. it. I don't have. Just give me a cheese charcuterie board. And that's probably perfectly upcharge. fine. You're getting charged a yeah. like for them to spread butter out on our board. I'm like, just do it on my toast already. Do yes, my- please. I've got a toast already. Let's get this <laughs> over with. I mean, they upcharge for a lot of trends yeah. these days, like Absolutely. bone broth. Oh, I just paid $10 for an eight ounce it's cup stock. of broth. Yeah. You can go and make that at, at home. No, they put salt in it. So it's now, broth. oh man, <laughs> it's now fully seasoned broth from stock. No. In case you didn't know the difference, it's literally just that. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> What about with her being a baker? And you bake in your free time. Katie's cookies, in case you didn't know. Or cookies by Katie. I messed that up the other time, too. Whatever. No cross-branding here. Get over it. (laughs) Let's talk about the cronut and the cruffin (laughs) Okay, I'm guilty. I'm guilty, okay, because I I did have a cronut the other day from Glaze Donuts. (laughs) So I'm guilty of that. How was it? It was really good. Yeah, it is really good. It's really good. They're great. I don't know if we need different shapes for every single baked um, good under the sun. But. No, I mean, I mean, in New York City, Supermoon Bakery does uh, cruffins, which is filled like croissant muffins. Right, which is really just a queen of mine, if we think about yeah, it. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, but, like, learn to make the traditional pastry the right way and stop. I think when it first it up. when that first came out. This is another oh, Play-Doh man. trend by Ben Lehar. Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> Cronut's been around for a very long time. The the Cronut and, well, with the Cruffin, that I didn't really see until I think it was like 2016 or something. And someone bought like a bunch of them for a special event that they had. And I saw all these like super moon boxes. <laughs> she hit the mic. We're okay. Keep it going. I got really excited for this. <laughs> these like, like um, mirrored looking boxes. Um, and then I was like, what is, what's in that? And then they opened it up and I was like, what is this? This, this creation, this is awesome. So for a while I was like, okay, this is awesome. And now it's like, all right, you could do every flavor in the book. It's, you know, croissant. Yeah. Flavored. The square croissant and the circle croissant. The, the wheel. The wheel. Yeah. Le wheel. <laughs> So to speak. I'm over those two. Only only because I am a stickler, as we've talked about a million times with French pastries in general. I am a sucker for those. Oh. And if it doesn't taste 
good to begin with and you just change the shape like i'm not here out posting on instagram no, about now that I'm like, i want you know, it to taste I just good, want please. like just give me the classic it was 12 dollars. please taste good <laughs> <laughs> yeah especially like with we always talk about it baltazar's yeah bakery. the king so good and queens gotta shout out chocolatine in denville new jersey yep absolutely Amazing. And unironically, also, who I'm eyeing on this topic. Ben that wants that they do the square. square croissant. He wants it. Don't buy. Yeah. The I square. would eat it. Yeah. And they're pretty delicious. good. But at the same time, I'm like, you're a classically trained French pastry chef. Yeah. And people just want. make a good cannelé and queen of man. People want. Yeah, and I, then I, we I, can work from there. My <laughs> wife is a baker. She's been a baker for a long time. Right, so she's had her fair share of experience with, like, making laminated dough. She's always like, it always has to have the honeycomb. And the center of the croissant. What, what did you say? The honeycomb. It's like when you the open it up work. and then like you just see oh, no, the work. Before like, that, I didn't hear what you said. But that's laminating. Not, laminating. Oh, laminating. Yeah, laminating laminating yeah. doughs. Um, so she's like, yeah, she's had her fair share of experience. So like she'll give me her like best opinion on that. It's a great opinion too. But um, yeah, so it's like I'm always like mindful of like which pastries to go with because I'm always thinking in the back of the head, in my head. Like, what would my wife say about this? Yeah. <laughs> would she approve? Will she approve of this? Am I allowed to bring these home? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but with you know, with Baltazar's, it's always a it's always a good thing. Yeah, that's my go to too, especially yeah. if it's with that location that they have in Englewood. Don't know if they go to the city for Baltazar's anymore. Shout my out hometown. to Balthaz- Baltazar's Englewood, New Jersey. Yeah. This might just be called the shout out episode. <laughs> There's a lot of great stuff in New Jersey. Yeah, I know. There's an There's amazing, amazing amount, amount of things. Yeah. And I think that's also why it was hard for me and Katie to come up with a list of trends when we were looking at it. Because mm-hmm. there is so much stuff that's TikTok oriented. There is so much stuff. That's home chef oriented, restaurant oriented, and then more job specific, like food industry oriented. Like when we look, like we were talking about sustainable packaging, you know what I mean? And how important that should be in restaurants as well. But really, these companies are doing it for the consumer facing part of their business because consumers want to be ecologically conscious yeah. and not being wasteful or anything like that. But I mean, if would you change your opinion on what you brought into your kitchen if it had sustainable packaging versus not? If it was more expensive? If I mean, I think that I mean, obviously, it does contribute to the environment itself, and I mean, I'm very considerate of that as well. And I think that we do a fair share of that here in in Fossil. Um, I mean, that's kind of what we stand for as well, right? So I follow follow it, even if it's you know a little bit pricier. That's okay. You know, it's yeah. what matters outside of here as well, too. So what we're putting out there as well. So we need to be able to back that up. Yeah. You got to talk the talk and talk walk the, the talk. walk. Exactly. I think it's kind yeah. of like, in, almost in contrast to what you said, you know, you said businesses just do it because consumers want to see it. But I mean, those business owners are also consumers, you know, like if you, you can be someone who's very environmentally conscious and also own a business, you know? So yes, that is something that's pretty popular in the public sphere, but I don't necessarily, I I don't really think that, you know, the only reason a business will do it is just to, you know, get that wink and nod from the the consumer. Depends on the business. No, it definitely does. But I wouldn't say, oh, that's the only reason they do it. You know, consumers (laughs) will choose you over someone else because they know you're environmentally friendly. It definitely is a big marketing point. I don't think anybody's going to try and charge more money if they weren't conscious of it. But again, to your point, it's all encompassing. Um, So I want to talk about an ingredient that you hadn't, I don't think Ben had heard of it either. You probably have. So they're they're saying this is this is a rising star. It actually was called the new kale. Hmm. Kale flop. Oh. Uh, so it's called moringa. Moringa. And it is apparently the it's a plant extract that comes from the horseradish tree. I don't believe it tastes anything at all like horseradish. I don't I don't, I don't know. Never had it. Didn't know it existed. But it's got way more protein than matcha. So they com- you know they compare it to matcha. It's got like tons of vitamins super high in antioxidants, re- like ton of health benefits. So they're saying this is going to become the new like turmeric latte type thing. <laughs> oh, no. And that is going to – the picture, the picture, it looked like just a green powder. Like it looked like matcha. You know, like but chlorophyll? They're saying, yeah, I should have I should have looked up what it tastes like though because I didn't. And if it's just horseradish, like that has no place being no. near my coffee. Is that mm-hmm. some new green drink? You know what I mean? Green things are healthy for you. Yeah. That, is that that's true? Kind of like, yes. Uh, I mean, true. you mentioned, you know, matcha. Slime. Slime. Not all green things. <laughs> Nickelodeon you meant, slime. You had, oh a, my God. you had mentioned the the matcha. I mean, if yes. that's trending, that's, you know, just as much as 
I'm sure as much as Macho will like has been mm-hmm. before. I mean, Macho's been like in everything at this point. Desserts, boba tea, well, just <laughs> just like any beverage, you know. I mean, this is the first time I'm actually hearing it. To be honest, you know, I don't, I don't think that's you know. M O O. You heard it here first. I N G A. Yes. Hopefully, this is your first time hearing of it, and we're all learning together as a family. Yes. What's that effect when you learn of something new and then you see it everywhere? I forget the term for that. But Don't that's going to happen with it. the Moringa. Anybody listen to this? Moringa. Get ready for it. It's coming for you. Do I get another one? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so apparently Gen Z, crazy kids, are swapping out coffee for energy drinks, which for, for, for me, when I read that, I just thought like, ooh, college, flashback. Yeah. But I totally believe that because I feel like I have been seeing – so many new brands of yeah, energy drink and sure. also like drinks that existed and now they have a version that's like plus energy boost. Like there's a right. there's like a some type of V eight canned drink that it's not just like straight V eight juice. I forget what it is. And now V eight and caffeine probably. No, no, no. I mean it's not just like straight vegetable juice like this beverage as it is like um like ginseng or something that's in there it's, it's just like it's a carbonated lighter yeah you know it's not like a thick yeah. vegetable the juice. faux sodas are very i'm like a, right now. i feel like i'm a classic person i just go for coffee as my like half yeah. fix i mean i died college like you said like yeah we'll you know so many fair there. share of monsters and red bulls but monsters. now coffee is for me the way to go i don't these low calorie and then energy boosts. Uh, it's just not yeah. for me. Pre- yeah. Like that's like, just my preference. Calorie yeah. free. Energy boost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, unless you add like, you know, unless product you into it. Sweet. Yeah. Then, just then like that's a guys. difference. <laughs> um, Sheesh. <laughs> but what I, what I wanted to say too is uh, at the, um, the gym down the street, there's, they brought in this new thing that I had never seen before. And it's this energy drink. And what's it called? I'm getting there. Oh, and, and, <laughs> it it has been like super popular. Like I keep seeing kids grab it, and and it is mostly kids. No, it's like not the. the... Y- oh no! <laughs> Tell us. No, it's not what I was drinking the other day that okay, you good. gave me. You know what about a hard time? Um, and that wasn't the energy drink. That was the hydration one anyway. So we're gonna drop it, okay? Um, so it's called Ghost. And, oh, um, you know, those, and so, I saw I used to buy their protein, like protein powder. So that existed? Are, like, yeah. Protein. So I went to <laughs> one of the, the trainers at the gym and I was like, hey, like, I know you just brought these in. Like, these are super popular. Everyone wants them. And he was like, and I was like, oh, and also like, that's kind of a crazy name, Ghost. And I was like, you know why? <laughs> and I turned around a label and I, it, they're like, Ghost, because the label is transparent. And I was like, ah, that's funny. And he was like, no, because... Like, they think that's what the kids will like, like a cool name. Yeah. And the the packaging on the can is, like, funky and super bright, and there's, like, relief on it. Like, the ghost, you know, is, like, it's, it's just in relief. It stands out against the can. Um, so I thought that was and cool. And also their, their, their flavor profiles, too, because they do, like, a, I think a Swedish fish flavor uh, and, like... Um, so it's not too sweet. It's sour, sweet sour Patch. <laughs> I think it's Sour Patch. I don't know. Um, but they do various flavors and like various like, oh yeah I like saw, protein I, flavors I think too it was that like, kind of trap people into getting it. It's like red starburst flavor, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, so it like really just keeps them attracted to it. And it's like okay, cool, I yeah. can drink this and get like some sort of you know relief after my workout or do pre workout yeah, and yeah, you know do that. But I thought that was interesting because when I saw that, I immediately thought of that. I was like, oh, I keep seeing all these new things at the at the gym, and when like the high school kids are there. They're just like going to the cooler, going to the cooler, and they're getting all those things. I'm like, yeah, like Celsius is, is super popular now. Oh, yeah. Super big. Um, so, yeah, energy drinks. Coffee's probably better for you. Probably. I, yeah, yeah, maybe. I, I would prefer coffee. I can't imagine Gen Z's like moving away from coffee for any moral reason. They're like, ah, you know, fair trade's just too expensive. I guess I'll go with energy drinks. <laughs> I guess I'll just pick maybe up as I get uh, older. Logan Paul's Prime, you know, because he's a good moral litmus for the next generation. But that's its own conversation. I don't do energy drinks. Maybe a Red Bull vodka 10 years ago. Again, Sheesh. also like you guys in college. Yeah. And then there was the Four Loco craze, but we're not going to go down that mm, rabbit no. hole. <laughs> but there's nothing healthy about these energy drinks. Not that drinking as much coffee as everybody in this office does is healthy either. Yeah. But I think I watched you walk by me with a giant pot of coffee and I was like, oh my God, it's like 3 p.m. What are you doing? <laughs> and you're like, I'm making tiramisu. It's yeah, totally yeah. fine. <laughs> but if you want some. Yeah. Uh, Got plenty of it. We have two or three Nespresso machines in the building. 
two. two. Only the two yeah. espresso machines. And a Keurig. Yeah, the kitchen. <laughs> and a Keurig. The kitchen has has their own espresso. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate you. The Nespresso's rule. That's a big trend. That's super popular now. I think that's an exceptional cup of coffee. Yeah. For the most part. It I is. don't have one <laughs> or use one. I feel like you're just saying that because everyone in this. No, I think it's loves legit. Nespresso. It's legit. It's some of so them, though, fast. So, like, some of the flavors, though, are just not the greatest. Like, some of the, like, flavored coffees, I'm not a huge fan of. That's a but trend like, we're talking about. Flavored yeah. coffees. I don't I think, get it. I think some... I love flavored coffee. Uh, I'm I okay with certain coffee. ones, yeah. I think some of them just don't taste like what don't they... Don't attack me. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think some of them just don't taste like what they're supposed to taste like. But I, I just learned that I wrote down enough topics to cover three half-hour episodes. Do, do, ben, do you have uh, another one you'd like to bring up? <sighs> I don't think I have anything on this list worth going over. Actually, you can jump on to one. I was going to say things like the sushi taco or sushi burrito. Disgusting. Where I'm just mm-hmm. like, I don't... Disgusting. It's not the method for that. And I, I, Well, I was going to say it kind of segues into like this whole like big Asian fusion mm-hmm. fad that exists today mm-hmm. where people are like, let me take two ingredients that I've heard of from probably Southeast Asia... And put them into my Americanized version of a French dish and be like, check it out, I invented something new. Yeah. I think that's a little bit two-faced. No, but that's that's totally, I mean, Southeast Asian food in general and influence is huge. Like, you know, Singaporean, Philippine, Vietnamese, that's huge. Um, but I just can't possibly let this episode go without me saying, what human being needs to eat a single piece of sushi that is this big? I She's think, just holding her hands up. I it's think, like yeah. baseball. <laughs> I think that it's like a it's vile. It's like a softball. Why do you want that? I just I don't I can't. What kind of piece of sushi are we talking about? Is this the sushi burrito? The burritos. burrito, yeah. Oh yeah, I, the burritos. I I've seen them. Yeah. I'm like, what are no. you doing? The no. tacos. I can see some play if they're like the one bite ones, like Lamasan in the city mm-hmm. does some exceptional looking yeah. dishes. I've not had the ability to try them yet. The ability. What does that even mean? But I'm probably not gonna go and do it. Like I, everything that feels like a gimmick to me tends to be a gimmick like you can say it's a better carrier and it's like something different but at the same time i'm like you don't need to fly in the face of tradition and i'm normally a pretty non-traditional opinionated person but some things you don't really you know i feel like to gild the lily right i feel like it's like i can't use chopsticks so i decided to put my sushi in a taco form (laughs) (laughs) Uh, no only hands not here for it um i do want to talk about something uh and it is pickles Great one to end on here. Pickles. But fermented foods, mm-hmm. probiotics, beverages, fermented foods in general, condiments, a lot of Korean condiments um, becoming popular. Yeah. Fermented kimchi, all that. And just pickles in general. Mm-hmm. I heard they're out here putting pickles on pizza. And honestly, I would try that. Yeah, I'm actually, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there for that. I mean, I, I love, love pickles. pickles. I love anything pickles. It's really good. Yeah. It's so funky, fermented. <sighs> Yes. Yeah. Fair share. Pickles Kimchi. My boyfriend and I get a gallon at the farmer's market. I know that one. Of just pickle juice. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> when, Who said it? Pickles and juice. When I had, when Derek was working in the kitchen, he had his like, uh, I think it was a book by Renee Redzepi, um, where it just focused on a lot of like fermented product and he mm-hmm. started his own little like fermentation lab. Oh, <laughs> science, he's, science, he's science, 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 science. Yeah. Renee Redzepi obviously being one of the world's most famous chefs ran Noma until that closed last year. Unironically, right when that movie, the menu was coming out, that, that's an episode in itself. <laughs> yeah, <now>. absolutely. <laughs> I do not sign up for that. I'll um, do it. Though. Yeah. Pickles are great. They're out here putting on everything. And, uh, like I said, we wrote down enough for 17 episodes. So unfortunately that's all I got time for today, but She'll I, be back. I want to thank guys. you, chef Bianca. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure for your talking time. to you guys. This has been lovely. It's so yes. great to have someone else to talk to besides Ben. <laughs> yep. I'll be back <laughs> <Just> eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, do all that stuff that you can do on those awesome platforms. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Three, two, one.